Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. Today, I'll be going over this week's Advanced Knowledge Problem of the Week. For the full problem and solution transcript, you can see the link in the description of this video on our YouTube channel. So this week's Advanced Knowledge Problem asks you to calculate or to evaluate the uh, double integral here. We have this iterated integral of the function 2y dx dy. So we're going to go ahead and just start kind of plugging and chugging in here and see what we end up getting and see kind of what substitutions, what alterations we need to make as we go. Since from the beginning, just looking at it, 2y dx dy, so 2y dx, there's no immediate issues that we're seeing there. So we're going to go ahead and kind of dive right into this. So okay, so this is going to be equal to evaluating the interior integral, so negative 2 pi, just keeping the bounds of integration the same on the outside. Um, so the derivative of 2y, or the, excuse me, the integral of 2y with respect to x is going to be 2y, 2xy. And this is going to be need, need to be evaluated from um, x equals cosine y squared, and x is equal to negative y squared. And can't forget here we have the dy on the outside. Okay, so this is going to be equal to, we just need to plug in everywhere we see an x, we need to plug in cosine of quantity y squared. Um, and then we need to subtract off, plugging in everywhere we're seeing x, we need to plug in negative y squared. So at the beginning, so starting at the beginning here, we have um, 2, just write 2y cosine y squared. Uh, so that'll be our first term here, just plugging in cosine y squared for the x. And secondly, we are going to, we're going to subtract off. So we subtract off uh, plugging in negative y squared for x, but we see that we have a negative here and a negative there, so we can just make this positive. And we're going to get 2y cubed. So, okay, so can't forget here, we also still have to obviously integrate this um, from negative 2 pi to 0 dy. And we're left here with only a, a function in terms of y, so it looks like we're good to go in that respect. So what we can do now is we can break this up using the linearity of the integral. We can break this up into two separate integrals. So this is going to be equal to, that's going to be equal to um, integral from negative 2 pi to 0 cosine, uh, or excuse me, 2y cosine y squared dy plus the integral from negative 2 pi to 0 of 2y cubed dy. So right off the bat, it looks like uh, we're going to need to make a u substitution here. But this is pretty straightforward because we just have 2y, 2y cubed, and we're just integrating with respect to y, so that's fairly straightforward. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one first, and then we're going to go ahead and approach this one. There's two, two kind of different ways to do the second half of this integral. But the first, so the first way, OK, so I'll go ahead and rewrite this here. So um, integral, just copying down this integral from over here, negative 2 pi to 0, 2y cosine y squared dy plus, so the integral of 2y cubed with respect to y is going to be 1 half y to the fourth, 1 half y to the fourth, and that's going to be evaluated from y is equal to 2 pi, or y is equal to 0 to y is equal to negative 2 pi. Okay. We can go ahead and evaluate the quantity that we just integrated across those bounds of integration, and then we approach the first half of the integral. So we're left with here, integral from negative 2 pi to 0 of 2y cosine y squared dy plus, OK, so 1 half. So we have 1 half times y to the fourth. Uh, so when y is equal to 0, this is 1 half times 0, minus here uh, 1 half, so 1 half times y to the fourth, when y is equal to negative 2 pi, <clears throat> is going to be 1 half uh, negative 2 pi to the fourth. So we're subtracting off all of this here. Okay. Great, so let's evaluate this inside. I'll finish erasing this down here. Okay, excellent. So 1 half times 0 
goes to 0, so um, negative 1 half. So first of all, negative 2 pi to the fourth, so 2. So we can do this uh, negative 2 to the fourth is going to be um, 16. So this is going to be over here. This goes to negative 1 half times 16 times pi to the fourth. So negative 1 half times 16 is negative 8. This is going to be uh, negative 8 pi to the fourth is what this term goes to over here. So we can simplify this once again. And we go from negative 2 pi to uh, cosine y squared dy uh, all minus 8 pi to the fourth because we're adding a negative here, so we just subtract it off. Okay, so now we have just one integral left to do here. So the first way would be if you notice, uh, if you notice here what we have would just be the chain rule, the result of the chain rule applied to sine of y squared. You could just go ahead and say, okay, well, the integral of this is sine of y squared because sine y squared is going to be, the derivative of that is going to be 2y times cosine y squared. But if that's not immediately, if that's not Im immediately um, obvious to you, you can also do perform a u substitution here to try to get rid of this y squared. So if we want to perform a u substitution, we can let u be equal to y squared. So then du, the derivative with respect to u, is equal to the derivative with respect to y. So 2y dy. And so we have here a 2y and a dy. So we're good to go with our u substitution. So now what we need to do is we need to reevaluate or uh, yeah, reevaluate or re-express our bounds of integration with respect to um, u instead of with respect to y. So what we have here is y. So up here we have y is equal to 0. And we know here that u is equal to y squared. So u is equal to 0 squared is equal to 0. So u is still equal to 0. And we have here uh, in the lower bound of integration um, y is equal to negative 2 pi. So that means u because here we have u is equal to y squared, so u is going to be equal to negative 2 pi squared, which equals uh, 4 pi squared. Okay, so we reevaluated our bounds of integration, so we can re-express this as follows. So we have the integral from 4 pi squared to 0, our new bounds of integration. And what we have here is cosine of u. cosine u du minus 8 pi to the fourth. Just copying that down from over there. So now we can just easily integrate this because we just have the integral of cosine u. So we know that this here is going to be to be integrated with respect to u and we get sine of u. Sine of u from u is equal to 0 uh, to u is equal to 4 pi squared. And we subtract off 8 pi to the fourth. OK. So we have now we're just going to plug in. Um, we're going to plug in and evaluate here at u is equal to 0 and u is equal to 4 pi squared. So we have finally sine of sine of 0 minus sine minus sine of u, so u is equal to 4 pi squared, so sine of 4 pi squared uh, minus 8 pi to the fourth. Okay, so just simplifying here. Uh, so sine of 0 is 0. That goes to 0. And we don't really know what these quantities are, so we can just leave them as uh, negative sine quantity 4 pi squared minus 8 uh, pi to the fourth. So if we wanted to plug this into our calculator, uh, making sure we're in radian mode here because we're in, um, but we're using radians, we have 4 pi squared in here, we would end up getting something that equals approximately 780.3. And that's going to be our final answer for our evaluated um, iterated integral here. So we just kind of simplified and then we did some u substitution that allowed us to integrate easily. And if you, don't, you actually don't even need to use u substitution if you just notice that this is the, the product of the chain, well, the result of the chain rule. 
Um, you can just kind of do it, play it by ear there. So that's it's a fairly simple, straightforward calculation. Just requires a little bit more advanced knowledge from calculus, multivariable calculus to allow you to do it. And also I should note this problem was actually taken directly from our multivariable calculus uh, new study guide resource, which is forthcoming, will be coming very soon, that will be available for purchase in our online store. So if you're interested in seeing more problems like this on a multivariable calculus, you can uh, stay posted on our social media. We'll be announcing when we finally release a new study guide. So there'll be lots more things just like this. And, um, a whole great new resource uh, from us here at the Center of Math. So that's going to be it for this week's Advanced Knowledge Problem of the Week. So to see more of these specific problems, uh, you can see our playlist here. To subscribe to our YouTube channel, click this link here. And to visit us at centerofmath.org, you can click this link here. Thank you for watching.